Hi there, crafty friends. I think that we're live. So let me just get this all set up. It's going to just be me today. And I know this front facing camera is a little grainy. It's a little dark. But uh, once we switch over to the more important camera, which is this one, it will be great. So I'm going to give this some time to let people sign on. Hi, Daniel. Hi, Carol. Thanks for joining me. Um, Heather is not joining me um, in person today, but um, she will be uh, moderating. So you'll see her in the comments chatting, um, uh, answering any question that I might miss, and linking you to all of the products that I'm going to be using today. So we're going to create some slim line cards today. Um, I didn't finish a sample, so uh, we're just going to make them together today uh, while we're live. I do have, of course, an idea of what I'm going to do. Um, so we will we will create it together. So I am being bold and I'm going to try to get two cards done. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Um, we'll we'll shoot for the best or whatever that saying is. <laughs> Hope for the best. Yeah. Plan for the worst. Thanks. My husband helped me out there. <laughs> All right, so I see there's quite a few people joining in the comments. So thanks for joining me. Hi, guys. I, I know I probably missed some. I'm also going to see if I can get this loaded up here on my phone so that when I'm watching or when I'm creating, um, I might be able to see your comments a little bit better. Okay, so let's go ahead. I'm going to switch um, my video. All right. Okay. And then I am also going to mute this. Okay. I think we are good to go. So I'm going to show you what we are going to ink blend today. So we are going to ink blend this um, gradiating stripes background. Um, in these really pretty colors. So um, they go from stargazer to candy violet to coral reef, apricot, sweet mustard, and lemon whip. So um, let's go ahead and get started with that. So I just have a sheet of white cardstock. So I really like to use the um, hammer mill 100 pound smooth white cardstock when I'm ink blending with dye inks. I think you get a really um, smooth blend as you are using the dye inks, which um, if you know the properties of dye inks, you know that they are trying to uh, dye your paper. So sometimes they might seem a little splotchy. Uh, but what I've found with this hammer mill smooth white paper, um, it really, um, comments that a little bit so all right so this is the gradiating stripes stencil and we're just going to tape it down so one thing you'll notice that i do is i um there's two ways you can do this um you can trim your paper down to the exact size you want your panel to be um and you can do that with any of the slim cut dies that we have um, or just trim it down in general with your paper cutter. I actually like to have a little bit of extra on the sides, mainly so that I can tape it at the top and the bottom. And that just gives me a little bit more reassurance that I'm not gonna slide the paper around. And then I will die cut it afterwards. But I'll show you later um, a couple of fun tips for die cutting afterwards that help you make sure that you can line up those dies um perfectly every single time all right we are going to start ink blending from dark to light so dark at the top and we are going to start with stargazer first this is a really dark blue but when you ink blend uh, it gives you some time and you can really keep it very light if you want to and you will just ink blend um starting or excuse me keep it lighter at first and then you'll just want to darken the top because you're going to want to blend that lower color that's down here into the next color. So we are 
starting once again, like I said, with Stargazer. And we are just going to ink blend from the top to the bottom. And I'm just looking at some, oh, I, Daniel, I'm glad that you really love this release. We love it too. I have never made so many slimline cards in my life, but I am loving how fun they are and all of the versatility that this release has. Okay, so up next, we are going to ink blend with Candy Violet. And that's going to be the next color. So when I was picking colors, I knew I wanted to use Stargazer and Candy Violet and Apricot. But when I put those colors next to each other, um, they don't all actually complement each other. So that is where I threw in the coral reef and then added the yellow to the bottom just to give it a little bit of... Um, uh, just a little bit of lighter tones towards the bottom of the ink blending, but adding that coral reef in between candy violet and apricot gave it that coordinating or excuse me, complementary color. So that would, you wouldn't get this weird kind of muddy icky color that would have been created if I had tried to ink blend apricot and candy violet together. All right, so just a little bit more. I always like to ink blend the uh, color up into that first color that we used, which was Stargazer. Make that top part a little bit darker. And the cool thing about the stencils is the ink will also pool a little bit where the stencil design is. So it will give that um, kind of ombre feature at, for each of the stripes uh, really super easy. It's not even, it's really not hard to achieve. Just checking out some comments. Oh, I'm glad that you, um, oh, Nan Caro, it's very possible I butchered that. Um, I'm glad that you like the idea of cutting it down afterwards. Um, I, def I, have, I did it a few times when we first released these stencils where um, I ink blended it like this and then I tried to die cut with the um, essentials, the slim cuts die and I got it really off. So I've got some really fun tips for uh, that I'll share how to line those up perfectly um, after the fact. Okay, so we're moving on to Coral Reef. And that is going to come right after Candy Violet. And I'm going to blend up into the Candy Violet to try to get that one stripe to be a combination of both and then blend down to um, move the candy violet onto the next part of the stencil. All right, hello, Teresa and uh, Birdie. Thanks for joining me and hi, Peggy. Thanks for joining me as well. We are doing some slimline cards today. As I mentioned in my little intro, if you're just joining us, I'm gonna try to get to two. That might be a little bit brave, um, but we'll at least try. If not, I will finish it off camera and of course share it um, uh, on both the Pinkfresh Instagram account and my own. All right, so we're almost done with, with uh, Coral Reef. Excuse me, I almost said Candy Violet again. Almost done with Coral Reef and then we're gonna move on to Apricot. Oh, thank you, Deba. I hope I said that right. I, I'm glad you're loving this blend. I, uh, when I practiced it earlier, I was really thrilled with how it turns out. So I was really inspired by, so there's that time after sunset that's right before it's, it's dark and it's called Civil Twilight. Um, and it's where you get the really soft, dreamy colors in the sky and they typically, um, run this gamut where the darker colors at the top because uh, the sun is further away and then you got the soft dreamier colors that lend themselves as you know closer to where the sun has set. So that was the inspiration for this blend. Um, so I'm glad that you uh, like it. I, I really appreciate your nice comments about that. So if I didn't mention, oh sorry, if I didn't mention this is apricot 
that I am blending with next, blending it up into that coral reef block there and then bringing it down, keeping it a little bit light as you get further down. Oh, Margarita, I'm glad you're enjoying the stencil. This is actually, um, I think my favorite uh, standalone stencil. So the single stencils, we, you know, we have the single stencils, we have the two stencils that layer together. And then of course the stencils that um, coordinate with our some line stamps. And this, this one is probably my favorite of the single stencils. I just really, um, I think it's interesting. I like how the, the stripes change size as you go down. As somebody who really loves gradient, um, I love the fact that as my gradient um, goes, also the size of the stripes go. <laughs> Marcy, okay, so golden hour is actually, um, I think it's actually right before Civil Twilight. So you were, um, that's actually really very close. Um, golden hour is right before the sun um, is fully gone. And that's when you get that beautiful, perfect um, gold look in the sky. And the only reason I know all of this, you guys, is I went to photography school. <laughs> so these were important, these were important terms. Um, Mary, this is not an envelope. Uh, this is just a piece of eight and a half by 11 white cardstock cut in half long ways that I am blending to. Um, and then we will trim this down and it's going to be my card background. Um, so not an envelope, but cardstock. All right, we just used sweet mustard and we're gonna finish off with lemon whip, which is the um, lightest yellow in our ink collection. And this one, I just really want it to barely kiss the bottom of that to give it just that really nice soft fade there. Pardon me. Okay, so here comes the very best part. So we're gonna take some tape off. And we're gonna get the big reveal on the stencil or this the stencil reveal. This is my favorite part. I think this part's magical, but ta-da. And I think it looks so much like a sunset or, you know, that civil twilight time that I talked about earlier. Okay, so when, the last time we did this live, I felt a little scattered. And so I think what I'm gonna make sure to do is I am going to do a little bit of cleanup as I go. So bear with me. Um, all I'm doing is spraying my stencil down with a little bit of rubbing alcohol, just so that um, I can get that ink off. Now you don't have to do it right away. Even if you set your stencil aside and um, just add the little spritz of alcohol to it, um, it will still totally take off all of that ink. But I just wanted to kind of clean as I went. Um, okay, so we got our area clean and I am going to show you. So this is not the, the um, trimmer that I use most often. But what I love about this trimmer is it has this wire piece right here that allows me to really see where the, the blade is actually going to trim down, um, trim down the cardstock. Now, if you are really well versed with your, of course, now it's going to malfunction on me. <laughs> if you're really well versed with your other paper trimmers that are a little bit, of course, I'm probably going to have to do it this way now. Of course, this would happen on live live crafting. Um, there we go. Got it. Anyway, if you're really well versed with how your bigger trimmer cuts, then you can use something like that. I have not perfected that. So I like having this little handy dandy trimmer. This is my little travel one that I take when, you know, we were able to go craft in person with other people. Um, but this is the one that I take with me for those. But what I've, I've, I've found is when I'm trimming down these stenciled backgrounds, I really love the metal wire that allows me to really get right to the edge. 
Now, this is where my tip comes in for cutting with your slimline dies. Now, I've already done that on this version. And so I'm not going to recut this one, but I just want to show you what I do. So I'll take the large one. And as you can see, if I had just placed this onto that bigger block that I ink blended on, it has a little bit of a lip. And so it's hard to really see exactly where that cut line would be. So when you trim it down, you can then just take a couple pieces of tape. I like to use post-it tape because they don't stick too hard. And then you can just stick your background into the die, tape it down, and then run it through your die cut machine. And you'll end up with a perfect edge, whichever edge it is that you use. We've got the stitched and the diagonal stitched and uh, we have the ornate banner. There's lots of really great ways to do that. So um, just a quick tip for you guys for getting that perfect lineup going when you're using your slim dies. Now, another thing that you can do, um, if say you try to do it, just cut it directly from that sheet without trimming it down and you do get it a little off, um, you can actually make a really great frame by just using the um, first and second die in the slim cuts dies. And that just makes a nice little frame that you can pop over top and it'll cover that mistake right up. So just a couple of fun tips to um, show you guys. Uh, all right, so I'm just going to catch up on some comments. Oh, good, I'm glad you like my tips and, oh, and um, Margarita, thank you for, bearing with me and being so kind about my little hiccup with my trimmer. So I know it happens crafting live. It is what it is. Okay. So I am actually going to move some of these inside of my way because we are going to stamp today with the memory misty. I think I have dialed in my camera settings so that um, the memory misty uh, won't um, change the exposure every single time that I use it or I, every single time I move the lid. Okay, I just gotta make sure there's that and that just move a little out of the way. Okay, perfect. So I am going to put this panel into my memory misty. And we are going to stamp today with the Wildflower Sketches stamp set. So these are not, uh, we released these before we released all of our Slimline products, but they're these really beautiful silhouette um, leaves, botanicals, florals, um, lots of really gorgeous um, uh, images, sorry, in this. And so while it's not geared exactly towards slimline, um, they make really great um, backgrounds for your slimline. So we are going to stamp in stages first off. And all I'm gonna do is I am just going to start arranging some of the botanical images to the front. And so, this part, you really just kind of go, you just kind of put them where you want to. Um, there's not really any rhyme or reason. Uh, you can fuss around with them so that they fit a little bit better. And I typically just start with two to three of the images. So I'll start there and then I will, um, continue on layering and building my silhouette as I go. But we're gonna start with these three here. Um, so I am gonna stamp these in Stargazer. I'm gonna ink them up over pretty far off camera, but you'll at least hear it. So I did a little practice run of this one and I stamped those in black, but what I actually have, I, I realized is they would have looked so much better because I only used such a small amount of the star the stargazer at the very top of the ink blending that I thought stamping these in stargazer would help bring that color down 
to um, the bottom of the card. And that's my cute little Cocker Spaniel barking in the background, if you can hear her. Gotta live crafting live. And I think I'm gonna ink them up one more time. That was actually a really good impression, but I want these to be real, real dark and real solid. Um, Cause they are meant to be, they're out, they are meant to look like a silhouette. Right. I'm also fairly light-handed when it comes to stamping. So more often than not, you will see me stamping um, twice. And I did forget to dampen. So I'll just use a little stamp cleaner. All right, let's get those guys cleaned off. And we are gonna move on to the next, the next set of silhouettes. Um, let's see, there aren't too many sets with, or cards with this set out there. Yeah, there's, um, if you look on our website at the, um, the product link for this stamp set, there's a few, but you're right, there's not a ton. Uh, and that's why I wanted to, feature this stamp set today um, because it's so beautiful and it is really versatile um, and there's just so many really great ways to use it. So I wanted to showcase it um, today so you can see it used um, in a slimline card. And just to show you that while it wasn't intentionally designed for slimline, it can be definitely be used for some line. All right, so we're gonna arrange this guy right here. Now, one thing as I am continuing to line up these stamps and stamp with this stamp set, I wanted to give you a couple of tips for using this stamp set when um, you want to die cut it. So we suggest that when you are wanting to die cut the images, we suggest that you die cut the images first and then stamp them second. And the reason being for that is, as you can see, you've got these flimsy um, little, they're not flimsy, but they're thin um, ends to all of the botanicals. So um, it's possible that they might not stamp exactly the way that the die is shaped. So um, by die cutting first, you can then use your negative piece as a jig in your MISTI and really line up your stamp that way. So just a quick little tip for you guys when you are um, uh, using this beautiful stamp set. All right, and I'm a little slow at this, so bear with me. I just like making sure that everything is right where I want it to be, but I think I'm good with the next three stamps. All right. <laughs> Janelle, uh, every time, well, I think that Janelle, what that means is you just need to get the rest of the colors. <laughs> I know, easier said than done. Um, but hopefully you can keep these uh, new color um, combos in the back of your mind and as you add to your pink fresh ink collection um, you can keep them at the forefront and actually i got a perfect impression on that one i don't even need to stamp it a second time gotta love when that happens um jennifer you don't have a large misty okay um honestly you could probably do this without the large misty um I, just because I have one, um, it's just easier for me to pull this one out and use it this way. With your standard Misty, if that's what you have, you actually could slide the background up um, because it's not really gonna hurt it if you put um, lower the um, lid onto it. So you could actually just slide your um, background up just to leave room at the bottom for stamping um, so that you can, 
you know, it stamps all the way to the bottom of your, sorry about my dog, um, all the way to the bottom of your background. So that's a thought. And yeah, you can also use clear blocks as well um, if you feel like that would work easier. Um, but of course you can't double stamp with a clear block, but um, these are pretty forgiving stamps. And so as long as you get just some pretty good pressure, even pressure on them, they should stamp pretty well because they are very um, silhouetted, silhouetted. Can you order more magnets for the Misty? Yes, I believe you can. Um, I think you can get them um, directly from My Sweet Petunia and I believe quite a few online retailers carry them as well. All right, so we're gonna start building um, a little bit more to our scene here. So let's see, I like this little guy and I think I'm going to put him right here like that. And then, hmm, I think this one, I just want it to come up a little bit right there. And then I think I need something over on this edge. Maybe that guy. All right. I think we found our next set here. Let's see. Hmm. Maybe I'm not so sure what I think about that, actually. One is a little bit harder to choose here for me. Let's see. We'll just start doing this. This is another thing that I like to do um, when I'm having a hard time figuring out where I want some things to go. If you use the image side of your stamp set, you can uh, look and see what you think it would look like stamped. And we're gonna go like this. All right, this is the next set of, layer, of layers. Then I think we just have one more layer to do and then we will be finished with this part. Oh, Jennifer, I'm glad that you are liking my card and um, I'm um, glad you're liking the ideas I have for this card. I really appreciate that. Um, Honey Bee Stamping Hive, I'm glad you love the colors. I was really digging these colors too as I was planning out my live today. So I appreciate that a lot. Okay, it's starting to look really cool, isn't it guys? I'm, I'm excited about how this little silhouette background is turning out. All right, we're gonna just build a little bit more and then we're gonna call it good. And we're gonna get a sentiment added onto this. And I think that leaves me enough time to build the other card. The other card I have planned, I pretty much um, did a, most of the work because um, it's just got a, a bit of die cutting. So I think we're gonna be able to get to that second card which I'm excited about. Okay, so um, this one right here actually has florals that go with it. Um, and I am, I'm not gonna put florals on all of the ones that have the little coordinating posies, but I am on this one. So we're gonna go ahead and line those up. They're pretty easy to line up and they don't have to be perfect. So um, that's an important part, make sure that, um, you just get them in the general vicinity and they'll look great. All right, so I'm actually gonna go ahead and get those onto the background so that I don't um, mess them up. I do feel like this needs a little bit more to it. I feel like this guy needs to go, no, oh, not so much. Hmm. Just feel like we need a little bit more over here on this side. And maybe I just, oh, um, Megan, um, I'm glad you were able to catch it too. It's breakfast where you're at, so that's, that's cool. Um, Tiffany, you've been wanting some silhouette style stamps like this. Oh, I hope that, um, I hope that I inspire you to grab these ones. They are, really super beautiful 
and there's a lot of really great ways to use them. I know I apologize. I am being a little finicky here about what I want to put in this corner up here. I'm just having a hard time deciding. Let's see. I still am really liking this. So I think I'm going to make this one work right here. Pop a floral on top. Karen, I might do that over here. Um, I am going to get this guy loaded in first. I think the issue I'm having is there we go. There we go. I just want it to barely pop in on the left side here. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and ink these up. I think the part, the reason why I uh, have been a little hesitant about what I put um, up here is um, I didn't completely love what I did on my test run. And so I am wanting to make sure that I like how it looks and then I don't mess it up. So I think that's where my hesitation has been um, from this area. Oh, I do like how that turned out. Okay, good. And I think you're right. I do think we need to add a little bloom to top this guy right here. Apparently um, our stream got recommended into a group that has nothing to do with crafting. So, you know, that's always fun. Floating flowers in the breeze. That's kind of pretty. I do like that. You're right, that is kind of what is going on. And I do love that these stamps um, do give you the illusion of movement a little bit. So with the silhouette nature of them, Okay, let's see. Let's see. Ooh, don't do that. Um, what floral? I don't know if I want to do the floral. Okay, friends, I might do the floral after the fact. Well, actually, this one's pretty nice. Okay. I am going to add this little, little guy here. I don't know if it's, I don't think it's the bloom that technically coordinates with this stem. Sorry if my head gets in there. I just need to see a little bit better, um, but we are going to go with it. And then we will for sure be done stamping this silhouette background. We can move on to the next step. There we go. That might need to be stamped twice. Nope, it's good. Okay, so we have our silhouette background complete. Let's pull this out of here so we can see how that turned out. All right, so I pulled that out just so you could see, but we're gonna go ahead and put this back in because I am going to stamp and heat emboss um, the sentiment directly to the middle. Okay, so I'm gonna prep it with the powder tool. You definitely wanna be sure that you use a powder tool, especially since we did all of that ink blending and that stamping um, while dye ink does dry fairly quickly. Um, you still want to use that powder tool so that um, uh, none of the embossing powder will stick where you don't want it to. So I'm gonna use a sentiment from the You Are My Favorite stamp set, which is one of our new Slimline stamps. Um, Leanne, would you not have considered a blend of colors for the stamps? I mean, you could do a blend of colors if you wanted to. Um, I mostly wanted to bring the darker tone that you see at the top down to the bottom because um, I didn't use as much of it as I used in the lighter colors. Um, but you certainly could absolutely do an ombre shade on the florals as well. Completely up to you. It would look beautiful. All right, let's get that lined up. Um, what I love about these new slimline stamp sets, you know, the florals are so beautiful and I love the coordinating stencils, but I love that we were able to get a really good mix of beautiful sentiments that are a good mix of sizes. This is one of the bigger sentiments and it's just perfect for this slimline background. 
All right, we're gonna ink it up with a little bit of embossing ink. And I am always a double stamper when it comes to embossing ink because I can't see it very well. So we're gonna ink that up twice. Okay, hi D. I'm, I'm not sure if I had seen you join earlier. I'm, I might've missed it. I'm glad you're here. Uh, and I'm glad you like the sentiment. It's one of my faves. I love it too. Okay, so we're gonna do a little bit of heat, of heat embossing with gold. The gold is really gonna bring out a beautiful shine and um, some of the, you know, a good feel of the warmth that uh, is in this card. So you get a little bit of mix of cool tones and a mix of warm tones. Um, uh, Karen, yeah, that's a backlit photo. That's definitely um, kind of the look that I was going for. Um, you've got that beautiful um, sunset inspired co uh, colored background and then um, the, the botanicals all silhouetted in the front. Okay. Um, I think zoom mutes out this, but it, just in case, um, I'm going to turn my, I'm going to heat set this. So my heat gun is going to make this a little bit loud. So it's flattened out a little bit. And then look at that, just perfect amount of shine on there. Oh, D, I'm glad you came to watch me make my card. That's awesome. I appreciate you coming. Oh, De Deva or Deba, I'm not sure if I'm saying that correct or not. I'm glad that you're enjoying um, your floral note stamp set. That is one of my faves from this release. So I'm glad that you are having a great time with it. All right, I just gotta grab a couple things real quick so that we can get this card finished. All right, we're gonna mount it onto a white card base. And you all know we like to mention at Pink Fresh Studio, we are, we are in the school of Laura Basson. We believe dimension is life. So I am going to cover this background all up with foam tape. Margarita, yeah, that is actually something I, I didn't realize was happening, that I did not realize that Zoom muted um, sounds like that until I was watching a replay. And I was like, oh, well, that's interesting. Um, I, and very cool that it mutes those um, kind of cumbersome, noisy things that are part of crafting, but are not super pleasant when, when you're having to listen to them live. You know, these aren't the, these aren't these fancy edited videos where all of that's edited out and you've got the voiceover. So you get to hear everything that's going on. All right. So I got it covered in foam tape. We're just going to mount it to card base. So um, my card base is four by nine in size. It fits perfectly into a size 10 envelope, which is just a standard business or financial envelope. Um, the, the, this panel is three and five eighths by eight and five eighths. That's what we base all of our stencils and our um, die sizes on. Uh, just for reference. So, and then finally, we're going to throw some crystals on here. So I'm thinking purple. 
and pink and white. Okay. Um, Deva, yes, the floral notes does fit in your original Misty, which is definitely very nice. Okay, so we're going to throw some gems on. So I'm going to do purplish, the bigger purple up towards the top. Clear, woo, and pink. Oh, nope, I want this size. <laughs> Definitely can't live without the bling. Um, I put bling on pretty much every single card you could imagine. Do I have a bigger guy in there? I'll just stick with the purple. Um, hi, Morella. I'm glad you could join us. And of course, uh, this will save as a replay. Um, so you'll be able to check it out whenever you want to. Whenever, whenever you have a moment. Sometimes it takes a little while to save to um, our page when we do this from Zoom. So just be patient if you don't see it right away. All right. All right, guys, I think that we can make it to my second card. Like I said, it's for the most part done because um, I did all of the die cutting. It's just a little bit, one little fun technique I wanted to show you. Um, and oops, got some purple in there. One little fun technique that I wanted to show you. Um, and then it's basically just putting the card together for the most part. So I think we can bust through it. <laughs> okay, so there is woo, card number one. And that is why I close these because I knock them over all of the time. Okay, so there's card number one. We're just gonna set these crystals aside. Um, Deva, the crystals have some of the same colors as the jewels. I wouldn't say they're all the same. Um, and the big difference between the jewels and the crystals is the jewels are flat backed and they are um, iridescent where the crystals are actually shaped like a diamond. So they have a flat top and that is how I have adhered them to my card here. Um, but they also are really great in shaker cards um, to put into your shaker window. Okay, so for the next card, um, I just have to find all of my pieces here. So we're gonna take the panel that I um, had pre-die cut, and I just wanted to show you guys something kind of, a, a kind of a fun technique. So, um, I have die cut some of the wildflower sketches dies out from just white cardstock. But rather than stamp them, I've just added a little bit of gold embossing to the edges to just give them a little bit of shimmer, a little bit of shine. And so I'm just gonna show you real quick how I do that. It's really super simple. You just take your embossing pad, you don't need to put any powder tool on it or anything and just um, dab where you want the gold to go. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect because it's, it's supposed to look like, you know, you slapped a little bit of gold embossing on it. It's not supposed to be pristine and perfect. So just dab it in some places you want that gold to go. And then basically just how you heat emboss a normal card, just go ahead and get your heat embossing powder on there. Um, you can wipe off if it gets in places you don't want it to go. And then you'll heat emboss it and you just get these really cool accents um, just by using the die cuts alone, or the dies alone, sorry. So yes, um, exactly, D. it's like a dipped effect, which is really cool. All right, 
And then you just end up with these really fun, um, a little bit abstract, beautiful gold dipped botanicals. And we're gonna use them to accent the middle of the card. Um, okay, so up first, we're going to stamp a sentiment to this because if I don't stamp a sentiment to it, um, I will get it on the card, I'll get foam tape on it um, and all of that fun stuff. And then it will be a lot harder. So um, now I just grabbed my, my standard Misty. It doesn't fit perfectly, but as I mentioned earlier that you could scoot this up, it's not gonna be hurt um, when I place the lid over top of it. So for this one, we are going to use um, the Incredibly Grateful stamp set. And I am going to use this. I am grateful for the way you listen to me, for the way you understand. We have some of the greatest, most unique heartfelt sentiments. Um, and so I really wanted to focus this one, or these two cards on those really lovely sentiments that we have. All right, I'm just lining it up here at the bottom. Get that back in there. And this time we are going to use Detail Black if I can find it. Give me just a second. All right, I'll just use the big one. I typically would prefer to use the cube when I am um, stamping, inking up a sentiment, but I seem to have misplaced it. So we'll go with the big pad. Okay, I, you'll probably hear me say this every single time I do a live, um, but I am a firm believer in stamping sentiments twice with a soft hand. And that is because um, our sentiments are fairly dainty. They sometimes have fairly small fonts or you know really thin scripts. And I wanna maintain that integrity, but still get that um, nice deep black sentiment. So um, I just like stamping twice. Um, oh, Megan, thanks for joining me. I'm, um, thanks for joining me today. And uh, I understand definitely having to head out to um, take your kiddos to school, but I'm so glad you did join in and we will definitely save this as a replay so you can watch it again. Okay. So we are in final steps here of creating this card. I'm gonna find my card base. Here we go. All right. So I am not going to pop this one up with foam tape because I think that it will have enough dimension. And really we are to the point now of we're winding down because um, I do have pretty much everything pre die cut on this one. Ooh, a little bit of adhesive got out there. Okay, so this is just a light pink card base. And we are just going to adhere that down. And then we're going to adhere to, so this is the ornate oval. This is from our essentials collection, just our standard essentials collection. So this is made for an A2 card base. And, but I just like to show how these um, products that you know were seemingly made for A2 cards can also be used on your slimline cards. Um, so just by putting it towards more towards the top and having the sentiment at the bottom, it makes it work for a slimline card. Um, Teresa, this is the ornate oval frame. I'm sure Heather will link it up here in just a moment. And I'm just using a little liquid glue. Um, D, I agree, this is one of my most loved dyes as well. Um, I use it often. And uh, this is a little, little tiny, tiny sneak peek, or not even a sneak peek, just a sneak mention. Um, we might have another version coming out soon. <laughs> that's all I'm getting. That's all you get. That's all you get. <laughs> all right. 
so I am going to just start adding the dipped botanicals into my frame. And I'm using liquid glue for this. And the reason being is it gives me some time because I'm gonna start out with the two larger pieces. But then I'm gonna tuck these smaller ones behind. Oh, and for reference, if you guys need to know the sentiment, this sentiment is from the incredibly grateful slimline set, stamp set. All right, and that allows me to pull it up a little. All right. And then finally, this little guy. We're just gonna tuck it in there. Okay. And the great thing about using liquid glue is if it doesn't look quite how you want to, you can still move it around a little bit, fuss with it, um, make it look a little bit closer to what you want it to. And I think this is gonna need a little more. There we go. Oh, goodness. That was a little far. <laughs> okay. And then finally, I have this cute little bow that I um, cut from our, it's called the Partial Cut Bouquet and a Bow die set. It's got this adorable little bow on it. It's one of my favorite bows um, to use on my cards. So we're closing in on an hour. Thank you guys for, for um, hanging in there with me. I knew I was, it was a lofty goal to create two cards. Um, All right. All right, and we're just going to let this sit here for a minute so that the um, glue sets up. Oh, Pauline, that's cool. Great minds think alike. <laughs> All right, and there is that card. And I think that this is where I am going to end this card. So um, it's starting to get pretty dark here. Um, so here we have the two cards that we made today using the same ink blended panel um, and the wildflower sketches two ways. So um, I hope that you guys liked this car card set here. Um, so I'm gonna give Heather a minute to pick a winner. Um, someone, of course, oh, I totally forgot to mention this at the beginning about the $15 gift card, but you guys are pros and you know that we pick a $15 gift card winner from all of our comments and shares. So um, Heather will be picking that here in just a minute. So hopefully you have enjoyed ink blending and stamping and uh, heat embossing. Um, I tend to create cards that are pretty dimensional. Um, so while these may not be extremely male friendly, they are perfect for um, popping into a package or um, sending in an envelope and just adding a little bit of extra postage. Okay, congratulations to Margarita. You have won today's $15 gift card. Congratulations. Um, we will, you're actually gonna send an email to me. So Leah at pinkfreshstudio.com and we will get you um, your gift card um, within two to three business days. So congratulations. Thanks for joining me, everyone. I am not going to pop the camera back around to me because it is really dark. And so I think that it um, will probably be pretty grainy. So we're just going to leave it here. But thanks for joining me. Be sure to join us tomorrow on Facebook Live for a scrapbooking live with Joka. And then on Thursday, we will also be back on Facebook Live with Heather. Um, other than that, I will see you guys next week. 
Bye. Have a good